Welcome to this lesson on how to enter our project activities as well as the activity duration. If you remember in the last lesson, I taught you how to create the work breakdown structure. So again, this is a simple schedule that we're working on. And within this simple schedule, we have a work breakdown structure, three items in our WBS, which are the groundwork, then the building structure, as well as the interior work. And we created that already within our Primavera, of course, that was in the last video. I've left the link to the last video here, and this is a series. So you may want to start from the first video to be able to appreciate exactly where we are. But just in case you're looking at how to enter activities, then you're welcome. So in the last lesson, we took a look at how to create the WBS, and this was exactly where we left it for the Community Health Center project. So I've entered the three items we have in the WBS. In this very lesson, we're not going to talk about how to enter the activities. So if I go back to the simple schedule, you can see the activities. Those are these ones that you have C1000, C1010, C1020, and C1030, which are my site preparation, excavation, foundation laying, and then also utilities installation up until the very last activity here, which is a final inspection. And you can see the duration here by the right-hand side of it. So you can see three days, four days, five days, three days, up until the last activity, which is of course final inspection that has a two days duration. And that's exactly what we're gonna be creating. So I'll split my screen for the purpose of this illustration so that I'll be able to do all of this while at the same time looking at the brief or the instruction here. So first of all, we need to do some tweaks. If I enter an activity in Primavera, Primavera of course is the one I have here by my left-hand side. So let's say, for example, I want to enter activity under groundwork. So if I right click on groundwork and click on add, for example, you will notice it create an activity for me and give it an activity ID A1000. You can see there A1000. But if you check the brief, the brief is saying C1000, C1010, C1020. So it means I need to align my activities ID with what's in the brief. And then to be able to do that, let me simply delete this activity that I added here. Then I need to go back to my projects page. To go back to the project page, I can do that from the directory by clicking on project. Or since I already have my projects page open here at the top, I can also click on it to go back to the projects page. However, let me use the directory. So when I click on directory, it takes me back to the projects page. So you can see the Community Health Center project. In the Community Health Center project, I'll now go to the detail view and click on the default tab. This is the default tab in the detail view. So within the default tab, if you take a look, you will see auto numbering default. You can see the activity prefix. That's exactly what is this is showing. The activity prefix is showing A. All I simply need to do is I change it from A to C. I mean, that's basically what I need to do in this case to be able to create these same activity IDs. And once I've done that, I navigate back to my activities page, either by clicking on activities in the directory, or since I already have it open, I can simply click on activities here at the very top. If I add an activity now, you will notice that the activity will now be C1000, C1010. C will be the prefix, basically as against A that we used to have before. So notice that within the uh, groundwork work package, the groundwork item that we have in our WBA, there are four activities under it. That is the C1000, 1010, 1020, and the C1030. So I need to add those four activities. All I simply need to do is I right click on the groundwork in my Primavera, and then I click on add. I do this four times to add the four spaces that I have under the groundwork. Once I've done that, the next is the building structure. So under building structure, there are three activities. So I repeat the same process. I right click and add, and I do that three times. Then the last set is the interior work. Under the interior work here, there are five activities. Again, I repeat the same process by right clicking and adding, and I do that five times. So with this, I would have been able to create cells where I need to now enter my activities. All I simply need to do going forward is to copy and paste. If you notice, I already have the activity IDs. So I simply copy and paste these activities and then paste them into these cells 
one after the other, beginning with site preparation. Then after that, I go to excavating. Don't forget to copy. You select and you do your control C. That's basically what I'm doing. You can also right click and copy. Then to paste, uh, once you've clicked and double click and make sure the cell is active, uh, you can make sure you delete the new activity that is showing there. Then do your control V to paste. Or you can also right click and use the paste option, whichever one works better for you. For me, of course, I prefer the control C and control V because it makes it faster for me. Okay, good. So I will just enter the activities one after the other up until the very last activity, which of course is final inspection. So once you've been able to enter the activities, which is exactly what I've done now, up until the very last activity, which is final inspection. So the next thing we're now going to do is to enter the activity duration. The duration is basically how long it will take to perform the activities. Notice that by default, Mavera gives it a five days duration. So the five days duration is usually like the default duration. Again, depending on uh, your default, some, some people may have it as two days or three days, depending on the default. Whatever the case is, this really doesn't matter. So here you enter the activities duration straight. I mean, it's as simple as entering the numbers. So site preparation has three days. So I simply type in three here. Then also um, excavation has four days duration. Then uh, foundation laying has five days duration. Then utilities has three days duration. Then I go to my framework erection. Uh, framework erection has six days duration, five days for wall construction, then four days for roofing. Then my electrical wiring has three days duration. Then plumbing has four days duration. And flooring has three days duration. Then painting has five days duration. And then the last one, which is final inspection, has two days duration. So once I've entered this, I just want to maximize my P6 screen so that you can see exactly what's happening, especially within the Gantt chart. So once I've entered the duration, you can see here it shows up in the Gantt chart. So let's assume that, for example, your Gantt chart is not showing at the moment. So let's say, for example, you have something like this. So maybe at this point, your Gantt chart is not showing. So to display your Gantt, all you simply need to do is you double click within your Gantt chart. So if you notice, the moment I double click, the Gantt chart actually shows up. And sometimes your time scale might be granular. Maybe you have your time scale still showing as um, quarter slash month. Uh, and again, if you want to make your time scale to be a bit more granular, so you can see the bars a little bit clearer, all you simply need to do is right click within the Gantt chart, then go to time scale. And when the time scale window pops up under the date interval, click in the drop down and select week slash day one week slash day one. That's exactly where uh, my time scale is. And then click on OK. So once you've done that, you're not going to see your time scale as week and days. And then with that, at least you would see your Gantt chart a little bit more clearly compared to what it used to be before now. So here we're taking a look at how to enter our activities and then also our activity duration. I hope this lesson was quite informative for you. If you want a detailed course on Primavera PC, you can actually book a one-on-one -on -one section with me by contacting me on the information displayed in your screen. Alternatively, you can also buy any of our courses on Udemy and you are going to find it absolutely useful. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at how to create the dependencies or the relationship between our project activities. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.